Yeah, hello? All right. It's good to be here. Actually, a real honor to be here. Um, the whole reason I'm doing most of the things I'm doing today is actually because it all started when I read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin in 2002. I had, uh, I had an internet company at the time. I was living in Canada. I started out of my house in 1993. I actually quit my job at a bank to start it uh, when the internet first came out. And everyone said I was crazy. And this is what I've kind of found out throughout my whole life. Uh, whenever anyone tells you you're crazy, that's a good sign. Uh, when, when they tell you not to do something, you should probably do it. Because most of those people live in the matrix. That's something we have to kind of realize and, and recognize. But I did, I quit, even though uh, one old lady at the bank told me, but you get, you get free dental. <laughs> and you have a job for life at the bank. And I looked at her, I said, that sounds like the worst thing that I would ever want is a job for life at the bank. And like I said, she's like, you look, but, but the free dental. I've added up the amount of money I've spent on my teeth in the last 30 years or 20 years since then. I think it's $150. Uh, I get my teeth cleaned every now and then in Thailand or Mexico, and that's basically it. Um, I don't drink Coca-Cola all day, they're fine. Um, but I started this company out of my house, and uh, it grew up to be the largest financial website in Canada called stockhouse.com. And uh, it still is to this day. And it, it, at the peak, it was worth uh, $240 million in the year 2000. I had 250 employees in eight countries across the world, and I, I was in Hong Kong, and they were just about to, uh, I was getting a, a check from the South China Morning Post for $5 million to invest in our company, right before we were going to go do a NASDAQ IPO. And right that morning, when I went to go get, to have the press conference and get the check from the South China Morning Post, I turned on CNBC. And uh, they said, that's it, the tech bubble has just burst, Amazon's down 50%, everything. And I was like, oh my God, what just happened? And I'm like, please. And I went to the press conference, I'm like, please give me the check. And he gave it to me, I'm like, cash this immediately. <laughs> and, uh, and right after that, it was just over. Uh, Bear Stearns, who isn't even around anymore, uh, stopped answering my calls. Everyone who wanted to take us public on the NASDAQ, all of a sudden it was just gone. And I was just sitting there going, what do we do now? And we ended up having to wrap up the entire company all the way down to about eight employees from 250. My partner uh, tried to commit, uh, commit suicide, tried to kill himself, jumping out of the eighth story of his apartment building. Uh, he survived. Um, and uh, it was actually, I, I ended up selling the company and I was like, what happened? And you know, I went to MBAs. <laughs> all these people went to school, real smart people who go to school, college, waste of time. But uh, he, uh, I'd say to them, I'd say, what happened? How do I have this company? It's worth nothing. Then it's worth a quarter of a billion dollars. And then another year later, it's worth nothing. How, what happened? Because my business didn't change that dramatically in that period of time. It was basically the same business. What happened? And all the MBAs, everyone would always say, well, that just happens sometimes. <laughs> and seriously, the answer I'd always get, that is always the same answer. That just happens sometimes. I'm like, I think there's got to be something more to it than that. There's got to be something a little bit more to it than that. And my uh, partner, who had tried to kill himself, uh, after a few months, they put all his bones back together and nailed it or screwed it all together. And he came over with crutches and uh, limped into my apartment where I was like getting ready to move out of it because we didn't have any money anymore. And um, he passes me a book and he says, read this. And it was the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. And I looked at him, I said, why? And he said, just read it. And I read it, and a week later, I was almost screaming, why didn't anyone tell me how the central banking system worked? I could have saved hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, and from that day on, that's what made me start what I'm doing today, the Dollar Vigilante. I was like, no one knows how this stuff works. Uh, I've got to tell people. So after a number of years of trying to sail around the world, sinking my sailboat in El Salvador, keep going by backpack for 100 different countries, I decided, okay, I have to get back to work now, and I've actually got a passion. I want to tell people how the central banking system works, how this entire fiat fractional reserve banking system works, uh, how Austri what Austrian economics is and why that's the only real economics, uh, Keynesian economics and why that's garbage. 
And so I started the Dollar Vigilante, all based off of all of that. And the interesting thing that happened in the process of all this is I began to learn about other stuff as well. I began to look into... Well, I knew the central banks uh, were already just an evil system. They are a tenet of communism. That is pure communism, central banking. It's so funny that people today can't even recognize that. It's like, so the entire U.S. economy and pretty much every other economy in the world, it's all centrally planned with a central bank, and they, desi- they, they, they decide the, the value of money. Uh, they can decide how much they want to print. They can give it to their friends. It's an absolute total scam. And... Uh, most people just have no idea. They still think, well, Ben Bernanke said, or Janet Yellen. Uh, yeah, these are just uh, you know, absolute use, useful idiots at the very best. At least Ben Bernanke was kind of smart. He was sort of like this math guy, and he's like, oh, I, I did some equations, so yeah, boom, we're going to screw the economy. And, uh, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, yeah, he had equations. Yeah, that was very, yeah, he's very smart, very smart. And then Janet Yellen, she just seems like an old lady with Alzheimer's. I don't know if it's a joke. Sort of like Stephen Hawking's, whoever that guy is, that they got all drugged up in the wheelchair and they say he talks. <laughs> he talks with it by blowing into a pen and people believe it. It's sort of like the same with uh, Janet Yellen. Anyway, uh, so I was like, we got to tell people about this stuff. And then I'm like, okay, but what is government? What are, what are they doing? Looked into that. I'm like, it's a big scam. Government, govern, to control, meant, mind, mind control. So we're born... And we're slaves. (laughs) And here in the U.S., if you're born, you immediately have $250,000 worth of U.S. government debt and liabilities overhanging you. Every family of four has a million dollars of federal government debt overhanging it. And they say, so if if a baby was born here today in Bozeman, Montana, he's immediately, well, you owe $250,000. Welcome to Earth. (laughs) And, uh, well, do I have any say in this or anything? Is this not just slavery? And uh, most people just can't see it still to this day that it's just slavery. They didn't get rid of slavery a few hundred years ago. They just made everyone slaves. <laughs> that's all that happened. And no one seemed to notice. No one seems to care. Uh, and that's mostly because people go to their government indoctrination camps for 12 years. And this is, forget about most, uh, many young boys, baby boys who are born today in the U.S. and many other places, Within a few days of being born, they uh, mutilate their their genitals, (laughs) cut off half the skin off his penis. Well, we've got to do that. Why? Tradition. Oh, traumatize a little two-year-old baby boy. Uh, Probably never get over that trauma. We'll never have a true sexual connection with a woman. No problem with that. Oh, and then we're going to pump him full of uh, 30-plus vaccines in the first two years before his immune system's even born. Nothing uh, odd about this at all. In fact, if you don't do it, you're bad. You're, you're going you're gonna to get my kids sick because you didn't get vaccinated. But I thought your kids were vaccinated. Well, shouldn't they be okay? Well, no, it doesn't work that way. It's herd mentality or something. I don't even know what they call it. Yeah, it is herd mentality. Uh, but th- like I said, they go to, after the getting their dick chopped off and being, their mercury and... Uh, formaldehyde pumped into kids, which they're never going to have a good uh, immune system after that. Then guess what, kid, who you already have $250,000 worth of debt that you got to pay off for some reason. Uh, well, now you got to go to school, the government indoctrination camps for 12 years and do your Pledge of Allegiance. They changed that after the 1940s for some reason, the, uh, the, how they did the pledge. But uh, <laughs> this is the world we live in, right? So... You know, it's really hard to tell people uh, all this stuff because they are so dumbed down. And now what do we have today? Chemtrails, which actually has all been admitted to now just in the last few months. Um, and they're all proud of it. They're like, oh, we're just trying to make the world cooler. I got into here last night. It was 40 degrees. It's cooled enough. So you stop dropping poison over everybody. Uh, Al Gore, uh, who created the Internet, right? Um, but, you know... That, people are just dumbed down. And what, what else, why else are they so stupid? Well, fluoride in the water. You know, I live in Mexico, and so many people come down there and from the U.S., and they'll say, oh, I'm scared to drink the water. I'm like, yeah, you probably shouldn't drink the tap water. I wouldn't drink the tap water anywhere. But if there's one place I definitely wouldn't, it's in most places in the U.S. And they go, why? And I'm like, because they put poison in it called fluoride, which actually shuts off your third eye, makes it so you're actually basically a zombie almost if you drink enough of it. 
oh, that's fine. So, so people go through all this sort of stuff. Uh, and then they, uh, then they get out of their 12 years of government indoctrination camps where they learned absolutely nothing. How many times have we heard from any high school graduates, oh, I got out of school, I can't get a job. Why? Well, I don't know how to do anything, and I've never done anything. I have no work experience. It's like, well, what have you been doing the last 12 years? Memorizing useless information. Okay, so what you need to do is go for four more years and pay for it, too. And uh, you know, it's going to cost like $100,000 now because now the government's helping out with all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll give you loans, though. The government will give you loans. Uh, funny thing about these student loans, uh, you can't actually get out of it even in bankruptcy. So this is debt for life. To get your $100,000 worth of learning about, get your uh, diploma in uh, Asian female basket weaving bachelor of whatever. And then they get out of there and they're like, okay, I'm like almost 30 now. Can't do anything. I know absolutely nothing. In fact, most of the stuff I know is wrong. I can't get a job. This is terrible. We need to increase the minimum wage. So we need the government to tell businesses that they got to pay us more, which obviously they don't know anything about economics. That's not going to work. Everything just gets destroyed. And this is basically where we're at with, with most people today. Uh, so we, we really live in, like there's a few movies to me that really don't seem like fiction. One of them is The Matrix. Uh, another one is The Truman Show, The True Man Show. I don't know if anyone ever noticed that, that name. Uh, you know, we live, and I, I always call uh, what we live in a cult. And I, I say... I call it sort of like, it's sort of like the Matrix, sort of like the Truman Show, but we live in a cult. Uh, everyone says it. It's our culture. It's a cult. Uh, and people just are, most people out there, people who wouldn't come to a conference like this, obviously, they are literally zombies. Like those zombie movies aren't fiction either. It's all kind of happening. And it's been on purpose. I was even just on the plane here, and... Uh, I was in business class, and the guy beside me uh, sat down. He kind of looked like Bernie Sanders, but without the crazy hair. And he opened his laptop, and he had, like, Windows Vista on it or something. And, and he's all squinting at the screen. And I looked over at the document he was working on, and it was like, globalism, blah, blah, blah. And he's obviously some UN globalism sort of guy. I don't, know if, I don't know if this is a medical issue or something. He was, like, picking his nose the entire five hours of the flight. I don't know how that's even possible. And I'd even look at him like, do you even know you're doing that? And he'd be like, just looking at me like, I'm like, holy cow, this guy's just like a zombie. And he's like, go, that's what these people are. And those, they love that. And they put all these people into all these places. And this is what we have today in, in every, every field. You know, you look at science, which I call scientism. Well, actually, let me backtrack a little bit. The reason I've started looking into all this stuff as I pointed out, was because uh, Jerry Griffin's book, then I looked into the finance, I looked into the central banks, I was like, that's a scam. Uh, then I looked into the governments, I'm like, that's a huge scam. And actually, the biggest uh, religion in the world, by the way, statism, the belief in government, because it is a belief. There is no one place that you can point at and go, that's the government. Whenever I ask somebody who believes in government, and luckily there's, there's less and less of them all the time, but I say, what is the government? And they're like, well, it's... Uh, and they point at like the White House. I'm like, that's a building. Uh, what is the government? And they're like, well, uh, Donald Trump. I'm like, that's a guy. What is it? And uh, it's a belief. People have been indoctrinated. It is just it's slavery, like I said. Um, and so we have people like that just, you know, totally dumbed down. And... I, re I recognized it. I recognized it with central banks. I recognized it with government. But the next thing that really woke me up was 9-11. And that is, to me, the smoking gun of so many things, for me personally. And uh, Richard Gage is here from 9-11, uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. And I don't know where he is, but thank you for your service, sir. Yes, thank you. Yeah. 
Sounds like happy barking, like. He's not angry, I don't think. That could be a government dog, who knows. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, I was like a lot of people. I didn't realize it at first what had happened. Uh, I still feel sick at what I did. I was, uh, I was still selling my internet company, so I didn't pay attention to what was going on, like most people out there. I knew 9-11 happened. I was like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. Uh, and I went to a baseball game in Toronto and actually stood up and took off my hat for the national anthem, which I look back on and I'm disgusted at myself for being such an idiot because that's exactly what they want from these things, right? Problem, reaction, solution. And I fell for it. Uh, but it was a few years later and I saw a film that was partly made by someone who has become a good friend of mine now, Luke Radowski of We Are Change, called Loose Change. And... Uh, I don't remember where I was, but I think I was on my boat or somewhere, just watching the internet, and I watched that, I went, wait a second, holy cow, how did I not see this? And that's the thing, We're all, we all have been, to an extent, brainwashed, and many of us are still brainwashed in many different ways, uh, and that's, that's what the matrix is. Uh, and, but as soon as I saw that, and I looked into it, I, I got into it so much, I'm still kind of into it to this day, but I, I must have spent months, if not years, just looking into 9-11. I'm like, okay, two planes knocked down three buildings at free fall speed, which is physically impossible, as Richard Gage will tell you. Um, I don't care how good of a bowler you are, <laughs> there's something happened weird there. Then it was September 10th, 2001, the day before, that Donald Rumsfeld, Rumsey, went on, on the television programming and said, we're missing... 2.3, not million, not billion, trillion, 2.3 trillion dollars, and said this is a serious life and death sort of a thing, and the next day, the accounting department of the Pentagram blew up. <laughs> they said it was hit by a plane. Well, where's all the evidence? The FBI came and took away all the cameras within minutes. Well, uh, and then you look at the... Uh, Where's the plane in Shanksville? <laughs> you ever seen the photo of the field? It's a garbage fire. It was like a small garbage fire. I'm like, where are all these planes? Um, and even the, the Pentagon one, uh, I was actually in, this is sort of like an awakening moment for me as well. I was like, I'm pretty sure 9-11 was not what they said it was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't guys in caves in Afghanistan with box cutters. Um, that did all this stuff. And, uh, but I was still looking into it. I'm like, I got to make sure. I can't say it unless I'm absolutely sure. But I'm like, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. And then I was in an airport in the US. And that's the only time I see television programming, by the way. I haven't had a television to use for TV. I don't even remember the last time. 80s? 90s something? I also didn't really go to school much. That might explain why I'm able to think fairly <laughs> reasonably. Um, but, you know, I was just looking at, uh, well, was, what happened was, I was in an airport in the U.S., and I'm walking by the television programming, which was CNN, which it usually is, and I, I still, to this day, whenever I even see it for even one minute, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> People are watching this and thinking it's real? It's like, whoa, can't believe it. I can't watch it, actually, for more than a minute or two. My heart starts racing. I don't know what kind of things they do with it, but uh, my heart will just start pounding. It's got all the red alert, terror alert, and, and it's like, blah, blah, what do you think? Let's go to Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room. I'm like, holy cow, what's going on? Turn it off and look out the window, and there's birds. It's chirp. It's like, wait a sec. <laughs> what's going on here? But I walk by CNN, and she goes, breaking news. The Pentagon, or the pentagram as I call it, the Department of Offense has just released the, the, the video that all the conspiracy, the nutshell conspiracy theorists have been saying that there was no plane that hit a pentagram. And they just released it today. And I was walking, I stopped, and I went, oh, maybe I was wrong. You know, all right, let's see. What, what, let's see the thing. Well, they just released three frames. <laughs> I was like, three frames? That's weird. Why would you do that? Well, you know, it's 24 frames per second is your average thing, you would think it'd take at least a few seconds, you'd have at least 100 frames, why would you just release three? And so they, they put the first frame, and it was just nothing, it was just like a nice day. Second frame, 
some sort of smoke. It looked maybe it could have been a missile or something. It's something smoky. And then an explosion. And on the, on the television programming, she goes, well, there you have it. The conspiracy theories can all go away because there's proof that a plane hit the Pentagon. And I was just like, and I looked around and everyone was nodding. They're like, you see, all those nut jobs. And I was just like, oh my God, I got to get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> like people are, that's how brainwashed they're. They're seeing things they don't even see. So you can say that to so many people. I've even brought it up. Like I'll, I'll even say it to people every now and then. They'll be like, well, you're an idiot. So how can you possibly believe that some people would want to do something like that? It's like, well, that happens all the time. But uh, uh, I'll say, well, where's the plane in Shanksville? And they'll be like, I see it. I'll be like, where? There's nothing. It's not even, it's like a little garbage fire. Even the coroner who showed up was like, I left after 10 minutes. It was a garbage fire. And it's like, well, I saw it. It's like, did you, whoa, scary. Like these matrix dwellers. Uh, and the scary thing is, those people believe in government and they believe you should be enslaved and they believe you should give up most of your money and they believe they own you. Uh, so these are very... I try not to hang around anyone who's like, uh, you know, a statist or, or uh, you know, isn't aware of what's going on. They're very, very dangerous people. That's sort of why I spend a lot of time down in Mexico. That's where I live most of the time now. Because they don't, they don't have the Pledge of Allegiance. They don't, the government indoctrination camps aren't that bad. They don't have fluoride in the water. I haven't seen any chemtrails around where I live. Uh, they don't have the uh, mainstream media television propaganda. It's so different. Like, wh like what I was saying with CNN here. I watch by a t walk by a TV and I can't believe the fear that they're pumping out. In Mexico, I, I sometimes see someone watching TV and it's usually the weather girl who's like the hottest girl you've ever seen in your life. And she's just bouncing around. She's like, it's sunny again today. And it's like... I'm like, yeah, good, good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's better down here. It's, 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 they're not under this attack of constant fear and war. We have to go to war. Which the U.S., you know, it's been at war forever. But that was what really turned me on to opening up my eyes to everything was 9-11. So it was first Gerald Griffin, was central banking, then government stuff, then 9-11. And then from there, I just started looking into everything. Mind blown, everything's a lie. Absolutely everything we've been told is a lie. And I don't even know what you want to talk about. We could talk about so many different things. But everything, pretty much, we've been told, talk about all the wars. Um, you know, if you listen to the people on television, you know, there was reasons to go to the war. Uh, Vietnam War, why are American people over there dropping chemicals on little kids in Vietnam? Uh, well, they attacked our boat in the Gulf of Tonkin, which is all admitted now, never happened. And then you look into every single, World War II, uh, well, they attacked the U.S. in Pearl Harbor. Well, if you know what actually happened, they actually cut off the oil supply to, J to Japan. Japan has no natural oil supplies. They had a week left. They were basically doing everything they could to make Japan attack them. And they actually knew they were going to attack them, and they just let it happen because they wanted it to start and let them get into that war. Every single war is that way. Of course, the Iraq war, uh, well, that was really, well, Afghanistan, that's based on a false flag attack, 9-11. The Iraq war, weapons of mass destruction, uh, we all know what happened with that. Now George Bush has his uh, press um, uh, things in the White House where they just laugh and laugh. No weapons over there. Million Iraqis dead. Ha, 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 ha. Sick, sick, sick system. Uh, that uh, all this stuff is. Um, you know, I look into all that stuff. I'm like, everything's a lie. Everything. Uh, you know, I could go into anything you want. Just bring up a major thing. Um, moon landing. Let's talk about the moon landing. <laughs> there's no way they went to the moon. If you've ever looked into it, it's absolutely, there's no way. Zero percent chance. <laughs> all right. We, these, we have a decent crowd here who knows this stuff. That's good. Um, if you ever look at the lunar lander, oh my god, it's so funny. I love watching the people today. Oh, this goes back to the scientism sort of stuff. So many people are so into science. Oh, you know, government's bad, but NASA's good. Uh, no. Uh, and they're, they're watching, like, what's it called, SpaceX or whatever with Elon Musk, which is one of the biggest sort of uh, welfare whores in, in our generation, getting billions of dollars to do all this stuff. Uh, but... Um, 
People would be like, hey, this is amazing. What an amazing time we live in. He launched a rocket. It went into outer space. They say we have no way of actually knowing that. Uh, and uh, then he brought it back and he landed it again. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. You know, in 50 years ago, they launched a rocket with people in it. They went into outer space. Then they got into another thing and they flew in that to the moon, played golf, <laughs> Drove around in dune buggies, took some pictures for a few days in like the 500 degree Fahrenheit heat with their, I don't know what kind of, I don't know about you guys, like it's 140 degrees in Las Vegas right now. I've never heard of any clothing that you're totally comfortable in that, but they had it back then. Um, and the lunar lander thing, it's made of curtain rods and tin foil. So they finished playing golf and, you know, doing their live stream, which was totally, you know, I, I don't know what the wireless technology they had back then, uh, but they're live streaming it back all day. <laughs> and then they, uh, they get back in and they're all like, yeah, let's go. And uh, the camera's all like, I don't know how they did it, but rigged to like actually pan up as they're taking off from the moon. <laughs> and it looks totally fake, but uh, it's like, whoop. And then they're like, all right, we're back in the rocket now. We're going to fly back to Earth. And they come back, and then they have their press conference where all three of them were like, they're like, how was the moon? And they're like, it's good. <laughs> they're like, I don't think they let them in on the, the scam until the last minute. I think they thought they were actually going to the moon. And then at the end, they're like, oh, crap. And now Buzz Aldrin's just drinking every day, just trying to. But, uh, you know, so just, everything's a lie. Everything. Uh, you know, just go down and down and down the rabbit hole. And I still find things. Uh, one big thing that I'm into right now a lot, just personally, is health-related stuff. Uh, I found that everything to do with that is a lie. Um, you know, cancer, that's an obvious one. Uh, but, you know, what I've actually discovered on my own, doing my own things, and, and for people who don't know me, I used to drink a lot, I used to smoke a lot, I used to eat a lot of garbage. And uh, one day I just snapped out of it and I said, I got to change this. And uh, one of the things I did was I, I went on a fast. And a lot of people don't know this. This is like the healthiest thing you could ever do. Uh, it actually cures pretty much all disease from what I understand. Uh, actually, all these names for diseases, this is the whole medical system as well. Doctors, let's, you want to talk about evil people. It's general doctors who prescribe, you know, trillions of dollars worth of lethal chemicals that never, ever actually fix the problem. Has anyone never noticed this yet? It always fixes the symptoms. Well, I don't know about you, but if I'm not feeling so hot and my head hurts because of it, I'd rather fix why my head hurts than just, you know, take something so my head doesn't hurt anymore while I still have this major, major problem. Literally hundreds of thousands of people die, I think, every year in the U.S. from actually just from the medication they're taking. But that nowhere near actually encompasses the truth because most people in the U.S. today are on tons of chemicals that are all killing them. And there's actually a solution from what I've understood from just doing this on myself personally. As soon as I did my first fast, I felt better than I've ever felt in my life. And that was just one day into it. On that day, I, it was actually the second day, I quit smoking. I was like... Why am I doing this? I was like, I feel so good. Three days in, I was like, and I've been talking about it ever since. I'm like, fasting is unbelievable. And they talk about it a lot in things like the Bible and stuff. It's like, who, who, who else has fasted? Uh, Moses, 40 days. Uh, and not even just uh, food fast, but even water. Dry fast, which I just tried the other day. Uh, Jesus did it. Uh, even uh, Muslims, we were all demonized, of course, now. Uh, uh, I almost wonder if there's a reason why they're demonizing the Muslims so much, because... They don't drink. Oh, that's another thing. I don't even have enough time to get into how evil alcohol is. And believe me, I drank a lot in my life, but now I know. Uh, but uh, Muslims don't drink, and they actually fast for like a month in Ramadan. So these guys are actually onto some stuff, in my opinion. Maybe that's why they're being demonized so much. Uh, but I see I'm running out of time. I could obviously talk for hours or days or weeks. I haven't even scratched the surface on what kind of matrix uh, cult we live in, but I actually have a, a, some good news. And I saw this uh, tagline uh, for the Red Pill Expo. And the tagline is, because you know something is wrong. And I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, 
You know what? You know why I'm here and why a lot of you guys are here? Because something is right right now. Something is right. People are waking up. People, for whatever reason, are becoming conscious right now. And you can say whatever it is, and there's all the hippies will say it's the age of Aquarius is happening, it's the lifting of the veil, the Christians will say, uh, the Mayan calendar was just a few years off, some people say, whatever it is, and it could be anything, but something is going on, and people are finally waking up, and this is just the beginning. And the elites, whatever you want to call them, you can call them the globalists, you can call them the banksters, you can call them the Zionists, you can call them the Freemasons, you can call them the Jesuits. Um, they're all fairly related. They actually know that they're losing right now. And I, th- I might actually have this theory that that's why David Rockefeller and Brzezinski, they're all taken off. They're like, let's get out of here before they find out what's going on. I actually think there's something to that. And we'll see if George Bush dies soon and hopefully the queen. Uh, but... Um, <laughs> Anyway, I'm out of time, so thank you very much.